Yo, 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 what it do? What it be? Oh, it's your boy, Agent A and T, repping the spell block agency. You know, game, gang. We don't play none of that shit. All that shit. It's a microphone checker, Supreme Neck Protector. About to get raw on the intercom and all that. Season 2, Episode 3 of Kingpins and Capos and all that. So let's get right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about the Lucchese family. And they can be traced back to the Morello gang in 1902. I've covered them extensively extensively in this series. But uh, the Lucchese family's root, early roots are more defined. And they even broke off from the Morello gang around the time World War II was... Or not World War II, but World War I was starting, you know, sometime around 1914. So, under the leadership of Gaetano... Reina, the family operated out of uh, the East Harlem and the Bronx boroughs, and mo for the most part, they stayed out of the Mafia and Camorra War that, you know, went on in the early 1910s and, you know, 1920s, and instead they focused up on uh, sewing up the ice distribution racket. No, that's not slang for nothing. These motherfuckers was really slanging ice, like no cap, no gown. Uh, had the ice racket sewn up. So by the time, and even more uh, money-making rackets. So when, uh, by the time Joe Masseria became boss, Reina, the Reina gang, or Reina and his crew, uh, they were aligned with Masseria. But then Masseria began demanding cuts of Reina's rackets and money. So Reina switched his support to Salvatore Maranzano. But on February 30th, 1930, Reina was murdered allegedly by a uh, young Vito Genovese. And uh, after Reina's murder, Masseria, uh, Masseria promoted Joe Pinzolo to boss instead of Tommy Gagliano. And this prompted Tommy Lucchese and Gagliano to join Maranzano as well. And on September uh, on, in September of 1930, Lucchese lured Joe Pinzolo to a Manhattan office building where, where he was whacked. And so uh, not long after that, in April 15th, uh, 1931... Salvatore held a meeting to declare himself, of course, boss of all bosses. Uh, after Joe Masseria was killed by Albert Anastasia, Joe Adonis, Vito Genovese, and Bugsy Siegel. You know, I've talked about that. They had the, the A-team pull up on them, and they basically expanded upon uh, the five families that Maranzano started. And... Uh, Pretty much implemented or continued to have the uh, infrastructure that Maranzano had as well. You know, like I said, the the capo, consigliere, boss, underboss kind of roles that they had. So, like I said, it was during that meeting on April 15, 1931, that the five families were formed with Maranzano, Joe Profaci, uh, Vincent Mangano, Lucky Luciano, and Tommy Gagliano. Those were the original five bosses, uh, bosses, and today their families are the Bonanno, Colombo, Gambino, Genovese, and the Lucchese families, respectively. Now, Al Capone uh, and the Chicago Outfit and the Buffalo Crime families were were also a part of the uh, the uh, commission, but they were not considered, you know, the original five families. You feel me? They were on the commission. That Luciano started, but the five families, those were, those are the five families. So, uh, as I've kind of talked about before, Luciano and a group called with called the Young Turks kind of felt that Maranzano was getting too greedy, kind of like Masseria was. And not even a year after the five families were birthed, they killed their creator. And Luciano held another meeting where he kept the concept of the five families, like I said, and the structure of the mafia. But he got rid of the boss of the boss of all bosses uh, moniker, the Capo de de Tutti or something like that, and uh, and he pretty much formed the commission as I just talked about, and he consisted of himself, uh, Al Capone, Stefano Magadino, and the other four bosses of the five families. And and while it was democratic on the surface, really Luciano. And whoever was allied with him held the majority power, kind of like you know any de any democracy. There's going to be a majority. You feel me? Like that's just how a democracy works. But after Luciano went uh, was sent upstate and deported in 1936, the Mangano, Bonanno, and Buffalo crime family and the Gaglianos lost power uh, when Luciano got sent upstate. 
So Gagliano was appointed boss of his own family during the birth of the five families, and while Luciano, Albert Anastasia, and Vito Genovese were committing high-profile high murders, and they always stayed in the headlines because of it, Tommy Gagliano and his family were mostly peaceful, and Tommy Gagliano kept such a low profile that when he died in 1951, it was really unknown if he was even running the family uh, or if he retired. There's, there's almost little to no details on his personal life or the man himself. And I mean, he mostly gave orders through Tommy Lucchese, who on the surface controlled the family and managed most of the day-to-day -day activities of the family. So really, he was running, he was uh, by proxy running it. But no one really knows when Gagliano uh, was uh, taken out of power or when he relinquished full power, when he s just stopped. If he ever did, you know, he might have died in in the office or as boss, you know. So, yeah, man, definitely a man of mystery, and that's uh, really what every other boss should have strived to be. But fortunate, unfortunately, it wasn't like that. Maybe some of them would have lasted longer, but, you know, who knows. So, uh when Gagliano passed away in 51, Lucchese took control of the family, and which, you know, which is why, it's, you know, it's called the Lucchese family, so, I mean, it's always been kind of like a low-profile family, and it, you know, it's, like I said, its history is pretty deep-rooted, but, uh, Lucchese took control of the family and helped Vito Genovese and Carlo Gambino take out Albert Anastasia and Frank Costello, and they took control of the commission. So after Genovese called the infamous Appalachian meeting, Lucchese and Gambino set up Genovese to get arrested uh, in 1959. And with that, Gambino and Lucchese's family were the most powerful families in the city. And so Gambino's family and the Lucchese families were pretty much in charge of the commission. They had the, you know, the majority vote or whatever. And so... During this time, Joe Gallo and his brothers took out Albert Anastasia, uh, so Lucchese and Gambino supported the Gallos in their attempt to take over the Profaci family, and with the Profaci family at war with each other, they really wouldn't notice the Gambinos and the Lucchese families taking, you know, over just, you know, just a couple of their rackets, so... While the Profaci family was at civil war, Joe Bonanno was plotting to kill Tommy Lucchese, Gambino, and a couple more of their allies in a power play to take over the commission. However, Gambino discovered the plot after uh, Joe Colombo, who was hired to kill Gambino, and uh, Joe, uh, Stephen Magadino, Stefano Magadino, uh, he pretty much ratted out his own boss, and for his loyalty to the commission, they gave him his own family. Uh, and then after he got his own family, they stripped Bonanno as boss, uh, Joe Bonanno as boss, and named Gaspar de Gregorio as new boss. Uh, and pretty much, uh, it was discovered that Joe Bonanno wasn't really the brains behind, but it was Joe Mag Magliaccio too. And uh, they spared Magliaccio and Bonanno's life, but they forced Magliaccio to pay 50k and exiled him, as you know, as same thing they did with uh, Joe Bonanno. Now, Tommy Lucchese died of a brain tumor in 1967, and by the time he died, uh, the man who was supposed to succeed him was in jail. So Carmine Tremonti took over, you know, kind of temporary leadership of the Lucchese family, but. It really wasn't long before Tremonti himself was indicted on charges in relation to the quote-unquote French Connection uh, heroin ring. But by the time he was found guilty in 1974, Anthony Corallo was out of prison and ready to take the reins uh, as leader or boss as it was intended originally. Now, Anthony Corallo kept the Lucchese as a business first, a murder second family, and he was very careful not to discuss business uh, at sit-downs or family meetings. Instead, he would use the car phone in a Jaguar owned by one of his bodyguards. You know, this was the 80s, bro. He had a car phone, bro. bro. You was a real boss. That was some boss type shit. So, yeah, he was doing he was doing hits straight off a car phone. Yeah, no, straight up <laughs> Rick Ross type shit. But anyways, sometime in the early 1980s. The feds managed to plant a bug on the Cor on Corallo's car, and, f and uh, finally not only managed to put Corallo on trial, but the other four mafia bosses of the five families in what is called uh, today or now the Mafia Commission trials. 
uh, and those started in 1985 so it took them you know a couple you know couple to a few years to get all of this evidence especially not on just Corallo but all five bosses of the five families like yeah so Corallo knew himself and other high-ranking uh, Lucasi members were going away for life so he named Vittorio Amuso the new boss and Anthony Caso was named underboss and together these two shattered the image that the Lucasi family was a peaceful family um, as originally the choice was with Anthony uh, Luongo, and he conveniently, like, he conveniently disappeared. You feel me? That was the first choice. And they were like, nah, that guy needs to go. So they that left the on, them two as the only two viable candidates. So uh, in April of that same year, they ordered a hit on John Gotti in retaliation for Paul Castello. Uh, Paul Castellano's murder uh, only they missed Gotti and killed Frank DeChico instead then Amuso demanded 50% of the Jersey Lucchese family's profits you know the Jersey section of the Lucchese family so when they refused uh, Amuso put a hit out on the entire Jersey Lucchese family to which the entire Jersey Lucchese faction left the family and either went into hiding or joined up with other families. You feel me? So, Amuso and Caso were seen as ruthless, and even members of their own family were skeptical of their decision making. They thought they were being irrational and erratic. Which I mean, I mean, listen, to it. they put a whole hit out on a whole on a whole set. Like, oh, the Jersey set of the Lucchese's? Nah, they done, son. They not real. They not real gang no more. Like that's nuts, bro. <laughs> But, uh, like I said, this, this led to them ordering hits on family members, thinking that they were informants. But then when the hits failed, the family member would then turn informant. And this happened, this wasn't the only time this happened. This wasn't the only family this shit happened to. There was a lot of other families where they thought one guy was ratting, so they tried to take him out, but the hit didn't work. So the guy's like, bro, I'm not a rat. Y'all think I'm a rat, so I might as well rat. And that's exactly what happened. So, uh, this was a, a period of time, though, that, uh, like, this was happening back to back. Like, uh, for example, Peter, Peter uh, Keode was in charge of the window scam, uh, uh, like, this window, big, high class window scam in New York. But uh, Muso thought he knew too much and would rat, so he ordered him killed, and Kyoto was shot uh, 12 times. But then he survived. Then Amuso broke long-standing mafia rules against women and children by order ordering Kyoto's family killed. So, of course, Kyoto said, fuck you guys and turn fed. I would, too. Y'all trying to kill my family, bro? What the fuck did I do to you? Like, I'm literally just trying to get y'all a bag, and now you think I'm a rat? Bro, fuck y'all. So, then Anthony, uh... Anthony Asaturo, or Axaturo, I don't know how do you pronounce this, A-C-C-E-T-T-U-R-O, but he was the boss of the Jersey Lucchese family that Amuso put a hit on, and he turned state too. So, uh, not to mention Al Diarco, who was acting boss of the Lucchese family while Amuso and Casa were on the run, he was even a target, and he recognized the setup, and then he turned informant too. Like I told you, it was like back to back for these guys, and it wasn't even just some low class soldiers or like drug dealers. Like these, bro, they had the boss, the acting boss. The person you put in charge while you were on the run, you tried to set up and kill. And you surprised he turned fit. Like, he, I would have no other choice, fam. Like, come on now. So, in 1991, the FBI captured Amuso, and two years later, they would track down Casso. In 1992, Amuso was sentenced to life in prison, and he believed Casso had betrayed him. So, he had him outcasted from the family and removed him as underboss. So... Casso started singing like a canary too, and even with all his cooperation, uh, Casso was sentenced to 455 years in prison, and he just he died two years ago in 2020. Uh, so, Vittorio Amuso is still the boss of the Lucchese family from behind bars, and while he's you know he's had a series of acting bosses and panels that have ran the family on a day-to-day -day basis, Amuso is still head honcho, and while they don't have the power and influence they once had. The Lucchese family is still a major factor in the in New York underworld. I mean, they still got a man 
with a short fuse running shit, and they deep as fucking in the Jersey gambling rackets, and have been since like the 40s and 50s. They probably better off in this new hour, in this new era, than a lot of the families, uh, than a lot of the other families, since they focused on, you know, getting money instead of war throughout their history. But that's just my assumption, you know, you know. But uh, yeah, that's just my kind of history of the uh, Lucchese family. And yeah, they still they still really active out there in New York. I mean, a lot of these five families still are. I mean, like I said, they don't carry the the same weight and power they used to, because a lot of the you know other gangs have moved in to America over you know the centuries and organized crime and all that. But you know, like I said, it's st still nothing, still not too smart to fuck with a wise guy. I know my Italian accent was terrible on that. I'm sorry, y'all, but hope y'all enjoyed the video. It's been your boy, Agent A and T. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, I got two more uh, videos left in this series, and then I will be doing a histories, mysteries, and conspiracies season. So y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, also, I've been on Twitch. I'm about to be on Twitch uh, streaming Madden and uh, UFC. After that, I'll be on baseball and hockey. I've just been mainly doing uh, sports games for now. But uh, y'all be safe. Don't get smoked. It's been your boy, Agent A and T. It's probably one of the saddest scenes in video game. As far as I, bruh, and I mean, this is just my opinion. I know that's this is just me. After playing this game, bruh, Joe Barbaro is one of my favorite characters of all time. And when they say he wasn't part of the deal, bro, hurt. Oh, bro. Definitely shed some tears for my boy Joey. But anyways, y'all, y'all have a good one. Like I said, be safe. Don't get smoked. Uh, don't cross the boss. And I'm out. Peace.